Okay, thank you, Marissa. Thanks, thanks everyone. Um, I'm Nicolas. Um, Joseph and myself are very happy to be here today to talk to you about the Octo project. Uh, we want to, uh, I mean, we want to give some some sort of a high level introduction to the Octo project and to show you how you can actually get started with the project. So, as uh, was just said, a little bit about ourselves. So, Joseph is a software developer. And uh, he's also one of the uh, Yocto project ambassadors, which is like some uh, special title that we give to key people uh, within our community who are actually doing a lot of very good things for the project, uh, whether they do advo advocacy work or helping newcomers on many different things, but that's, that's a special program for the Yocto projects. We are very happy to have uh, Joseph as one of our ambassadors. I'm uh, Nicolas, I work for Linaro and I'm also the Yocto project community manager. And uh, yes, so we are going to be with you today for, for this uh, live uh, mentorship series uh, with the Linux Foundation. So um, today, because of uh, the title and uh, how we are going to run the event, we expect uh, attendees with very different uh, backgrounds. So we expect people with software and outdoor background. So we will start a little bit with some introduction about what the Octo project is about. And then uh, we will do, and we will try to make like a live demo of actually what it is to use the Octo project. So if you don't know the Yocto project, uh, this is kind of an old joke that I've been using. Uh, if you have to remember one thing about the Yocto project is basically uh, the thing that helped people put Linux in orbit on Mars. So it's an old joke because nowadays we have Linux on Mars, but still, I mean, if you have to remember something, that's basically how, uh, how it, was, it was used a couple of years ago. So more, more seriously, what is the Yocto project? So it's basically an open source project which is hosted by the Linux Foundation since 2010. It's a collaboration project. And what it does is actually provides all the tools, all the processes, all the packages, everything that you need to make your own uh, specific custom Linux based system. Uh, it was embedded when it basically 10 years ago, it was mostly about embedded. And nowadays we see uh, the Yocto project being used in more and more uh, places uh, beyond what we actually started with embedded only. Um, so one thing which is also very important, it's actually completely independent of the underlying hardware architecture as we are going to see today, and uh, it actually works and can be used on any kind of hardware, uh, and we are going to actually make a demo and look at the RIS-5 today. Um, yes, um, we have, I mean, ob obviously our own um, uh, developer community, we have like, uh, I mean, you have some statistics here with like uh, thousands of developers who have contributed to the project, we have many companies also uh, contributing to the projects, um, to the source code of the project. Um, Yocto project is a, is a large project which is made of many different tools and sub projects. And you might have heard about Open Embedded and Bitbake, which are the key uh, sub projects which are actually part of, the, of Yocto itself. Uh, we will have, I mean, uh, we will see more, I mean, uh, about that in, the, in in this presentation. As I mentioned, um, the Yocto project can be used for platforms that work on ARM, x86, PowerPC, MIPS. And now, uh, since recently, we have also seen uh, initial support for the RISC-5 architecture in Open Embedded, and that's what we are going to deep dive today. Uh, the project itself is uh, organized uh, with like some administrative leadership and uh, technical leadership. We have companies who are actually sponsoring and founding the project. We have different level of membership uh, from silver to platinum, like pretty much most of the um, Linux Foundation project. This company make up the governing board and, are, and is in charge of I mean, making the big decisions of the project and the finances of the project, uh, running the infrastructure and uh, of the project as well. The Yocto project is also uh, governed by, uh, technically by the Technical Steering Committee, the TSC, and members of the TSC uh, are uh, elected uh, mostly by the, uh, the governing board. Just to show, uh, this is uh, the current membership of the Yocto project with the various levels. And as you can see uh, by looking at the few logos there, uh, it's not just about embedded. A few resources uh, before we deep dive. Uh, so we have the Yocto project website. Um, if you want to learn more about the project, the structure of the project, and if you want to find the first pointers to get started and, and get to know us, uh, the mailing list, if you are serious and want to start working with us and I mean, doing some collaboration with us as a user, as a developer, we have plenty of mailing lists and we welcome uh, new people. And uh, so I mean, feel free to use that. 
and the very well-known Yocto project documentation, uh, which has been a large effort uh, from us and from the project since the very beginning uh, to actually have like an outstanding uh, documentation for the project. The Yocto project is very often seen as something which is complex uh, to get started with, but yeah, hopefully we have some really good documentation and that you will be able to use. And obviously uh, we are there on uh, social medias, so you can feel free to follow us, look at what we are doing on, I mean, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, we'll see um, uh, what we are doing today. I mean, it's going to be a, a, a live session. So Joseph is going to guide you and show you how we do and how we use the Yocto project. And it's something that is actually very often doing, uh, I mean, in what we call the uh, Yocto project live coding sessions. So on a monthly basis, pretty much. And all the sessions are uh, available on the, on the channel, YouTube channel for the project. So you, we have, I think, more than 20 hours of live recording of Joseph doing something useful with the project. So if you like today's discussion, uh, you can click on that link and you will get to see Joseph even more. So now, this is it. So this is what we want to do uh, today. Uh, so we want to do a live show. So I'll give the stage in a few minutes to Joseph and it will open a terminal and it will show you how to get started. So what we want to achieve today is building and booting a complete Linux system for a RISC-V architecture. We'll use, I mean, for like practical reasons, we'll use QMU, uh, but everything will be built from source and everything will be customized uh, using uh, the Octo project. As you can imagine, it's probably something which is extremely difficult and something you probably don't want to do at home. And obviously, we are going to show you that this is not the case. That's very straightforward to get started with the Yocto project. So with that said, uh, I think uh, it's up to you, Joseph. So we can take questions. I think what's been said, uh, if, if you have any specific questions in, uh, at any point of time, uh, you can use the chat. And we'll try to do our best to monitor the question and answer. And there will be time after the demo and after the Joseph talk to actually take more questions as well. Ah, well, thanks, uh, Marisa and Nico, for kicking us off. Um, you will get my terminal straight to you in no time, so exactly now. Um, as I already pointed out, my name is Joseph. Um, in my daily life, I am a developer, a software developer for industrial controls at RSI Electronics. And um, through that work, I got into uh, the Yocto project, and it I gradually did more and more and more until I kind of leveled up to the ambassador status, which means that all of those funny uh, social media media things that uh, Nico just mentioned is, is usually uh, like caused by me. And I, I guess that's, that, that, that's a good wording. Okay, and with that, Let's start out. Um, anybody here has probably already seen seen the live coding sessions with better quality. Um, they were with 480. Uh, interesting. Okay, I'll take questions anytime. Interrupt me whenever uh, you feel you feel like it, and let's let's get started. Okay, to get started with uh, with a Yocta project, we usually um, grab Porky, which is what we're gonna do as the very first thing, straight hot off the, um, the Yocto project servers. And while it pulls down, I'm gonna explain it. Okay, let's go. So Pocky essentially is a reference distrib distribution. It pulls, and pulls in and ties up the things that Nico just explained. It pulls in Bitbake, which is um, the task runner that um, manages all the things that have to be done. It, it, it pulls in OE core, which is a, a huge load of metadata. We'll get to uh, what metadata actually is in, in a couple of minutes and some special source. And again, as Nico just mentioned, um, for, for uh, QMO to be usable, we need some initial support and some, some scripts around it, which is exactly what Pocky throws into the mix. And once we have all those things in one, we can get started. We do have a checkout. And from that checkout, we need to set up. Sorry, come again. No, OK. That, that was just, just sounded like some electronic music. 
Um, from from uh, from from the initial checkout, we need to set up um, a build environment, which actually is just like setting up some environment and uh, variables in the specific terminal session that we are in. So that means you don't have to um, have uh, all of your machine configured for a specific build. You can have as many builds as your hard disk permits. You just have to remember what is in each session. So Pocky brings a script for that, which we are going to source right now. Okay, what has happened? Let's have a quick peek into the environment. And it's, a, it's actually not that much. Basic, basically, it adds a couple of things to the path. The just um, mentioned scripts and bitback plus bitback environment extra wide. We, I, we, we are not going to need that for today. And after that, you're essentially set to build your own Linux. We are building for um, QEMU today. And we will we'll be with the cool kids. We're going for 64 bits. So machine is QEMU risk 5 64. Bitbake is, is our task runner, and we need to tell Bitbake what we want. And core image minimal. I'll get to that in a second. Okay. And now it's time to talk about metadata. You see, parsing recipes. Recipes are essentially the, the smallest unit of metadata that we have. And metadata means data about data. And in, in the context of the Yocta project, in the context of building a Linux distribution from source, metadata means data about the source. You know, it, um, it's data that tells Bitbag how to treat and build the source so something that is actually usable falls out in the end. And this means there's, there's some, some generic things around, like um, uh, all things that use auto tools as a build system, or all things that use CMake. And there's there's special things around, like all like for each source tarball or source repository that we are actually going to use. And you can see now that things are like going wild. This is because for each part of the of the metadata, it is essentially split up into tasks. Uh, tasks are things that have to be done for the data for the source and. This usually, but not necessarily, means like fetching, getting it from, oh, sorry, source, uh, fetching, getting it from somewhere, patching if necessary. Configure, you know, the old triplet, like configure, make, make, install. So a lot of sources need configuration. Then you, you need to build it, you need to uh, install into the target, you need to um, package it up. And then in the end, it is hopefully in a, in a working state that you can actually use. Um, in, in, the, in the context of the Yocto project, again, or in a, in a greater open embedded context, why did I just talk about packaging? Because one of the outstanding um, features of the Yocto project is that it's not just building a Linux system, it's actually building a Linux distribution. There's one really specific um, distinction. Once you're building a Linux system, it can mean that there's only like one tarball falling out in the end that you can boot. Okay, that is cool. But um, how do you upgrade one specific like uh, source package on it? That's complicated. And uh, if you are building a distribution in, in the sense of the Yocta project, every source package that you are actually building is going through the whole flow of a package man manager like RPM or DEP compatible. And only from that, the root file system is, is constructed. And with that, you have just seen everything is finished. We did just build 
a Linux system for Risk V. That was crazy, right? And um, I see the, the the question: Is the Git repo the same for all hardware? Yes, it is. Um, we will get to layers once I have finished the demonstration. Um, because I think we have a lot of time to discuss things later. I am going super fast today. Okay, we, ha we have built, you have seen tasks, you have seen packages. So now to prove that I actually built a Linux system, I also need to run it. And as promised, I'm gonna do it in a QMO for RISC-V. So again, machine, including typo, machine, equals QMU risk five. I'm trying to learn to learn touch typing and I'm horribly failing, I tell you. Uh, no, again, I just mentioned Pocky brings scripts for QMU and we're gonna use one of those. So run QMU is essentially like the Kent special source of Pocky to run stuff in QMU. And if I would kick off that right now, you would see a lot of error messages. Why is that? Because this is an SSH session. This is an SSH, ah, sorry. Talking, talking at, at the speed of Stephen Rosted is demanding. Okay, so um, this is an SSH session on a virtual instance on, a, on the Google, com uh, Google Compute Engine. And I don't, don't have uh, a graphic output and uh, the QM in the standard con uh, configuration goes to uh, an SDL output on X11 and we don't want that. We got, are gonna go for no graphic, including typo as promised. And, and um, we, don't, we don't want to use sudo and all the crazy stuff for networking. We just want to show that um, things are working. So it's the magic slurp thing that just tells RunQMU we, need, we, want, um, we want user space networking. And there we go. Fingers crossed, it boots. Mission accomplished. How fast did we go? How long, how long did it take us to, um, to build our, uh, a Linux system? 20 minutes, including disclaimer by Marisa and introduction by Nico. I think that's pretty awesome, right? I can log in. Um, let's let's um, look at proc uh, CPU ID. So, you know, I'm not cheating you. We're really on a on a on a risk five, and the kernel tells you the same. I'm I'm gonna give you five seconds to chew on that. Okay, would it guess it? The date code says Wednesday, September eight which is obviously not today. So how did I do that? Uh, we actually used a tiny cheat because no machine that I'm aware of can build a Linux distribution from scratch in that time. I, I do have access to pretty beefy build machines like um, half a terabyte of RAM, 256 cores, and they can do it. Compiling and building and packaging everything up takes way too long. And so what did we do? Um, we actually used one of the other super, super, super cool features of the Yocta project, uh, or to be more precise of open embedded technology and Bitbag as a whole. Um, we used the caching. So you can not only cache the downloads, uh, which means like pulling stuff from Git repositories and tarballs and everything, you can also cache whole build artifacts. And we're, again, back to the packages. This happens on a per package basis. And we call this the estate cache. And what we do, what Nico did while I was 
like blabbering away at us, at you, we're going to look at that, is um, he actually uh, made two small modifications to the configuration that just told Bitbake, okay, Joseph has already built that, go use that. And I'm going to show you that right now. So all of the configuration of the Yocto project of, of a Yocto build, of a specific build, let's, let's put it like that, happens in the local.conf. And we, we decided to skip that. So if you only watch like the first 15 minutes of what I did, if you follow the first lines that I typed, you will get a working build. It will just like take substantially longer, but it will work. And starting from that, we can do modifications or understand what is actually going on. So in local.conf, we can basically change everything. So what is there? There is the machine. Um, the machine is conditionally um, assigned. So uh, that's why I could just like pass it in on, on the command line. And here is the small trick that actually got inserted. The download directory is something that I pre-populated. And the other, the estate is also something that is pre-populated. But beyond that, no tricks, I promise. It, it is only to speed up the build. Uh, we, we're not going to talk about Tempdir or anything of, of the more deep diving things. Just again, it really, everything goes into a package manager. We're going to look at that in a second too. And we are by default using RPM. And other than that, I think that's about it. That's about the, 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 the core of things. Bitbake looks at the metadata, fetches all of the sources, does its thing, and also puts them on the side in case you have a subsequent build so you don't have to start over. Because we're now going to do some, some small modifications just so you, so you can see it in, in action. And there will, you will see that compilation and everything really takes some time. Um, I see one question. How is the number of cores being set? Um, this, is, this is happening by RunQM. Um, there are several machine definitions or QM environment definitions. And in the case of RISC-V for 64-bit, it's just a four core machine. If, if, um, if the, this is of some greater import importance, um, drop, us, drop us a note later and we'll show you the line where things are happening. Okay, so now um, we're gonna do some smaller modifications now because I told you things are being packaged up and once they are packaged, things get into an image. So there's essentially two things that you can build via Bitbake, there's, there's recipes that, that you can build directly. Those are producing packages and you can build images. We have just built an image and now we're gonna build something that is not in the image. Um, just so I don't have to type it over and over again, I'm gonna set uh, QMU risk five now as a real value. QMU risk five. Okay. So my usual uh, demonstration thing is BC, um, which is like a terminal cal calculator. And I'm going to use time if it's around. Hopefully it is. To, um, to like understand the build. And you, you, you will see that it takes quite a bit longer. And shall we, shall we, shall we? Uh, I think we have, we have time left. We don't, we don't have to hurry too much. So once um, this is, this is 
going through, we can inspect the artifacts that um, we see. Okay, finally I messed up. Sounds good. Okay, let's let's look at what actually comes out of this. So inside the build directory, you you have to think of everything that happens during a build as temporary because it is derived from source. You have the source. This is this is what open source is all about. If you have the source, everything else is like temporary. We can we can throw it away at any time. And we can recreate it. So basically, everything we build is um, in temp. And there's a lot of stuff that would need some deeper diving. But there is BC. Uh, BC is already around because the kernel needs it. That's it. Okay. But if we drill down more and more and more, we can see that per package, and I usually look at BC. There's RPMs created for specific architectures. And from that comes the images. They go into deploy because images are meant to deploy. And core image minimal. Let's look at it. That should that should be it. Uh, the, um, the font is a little bit too, too big. But actually, I think you can see that the root file system is like only a couple of, uh, of megabytes. OK, and one other really, really cool thing that we are really proud of is that per image, there comes a manifest and the manifest tells you exactly what packages and here here we come again for for the distribution and packages thing only if you go through the whole flow from from source to package to to image then you because you have to take every package as a single and put it into the into the image then um, as a, you have to you take every package as a single and put it into the image then you know what actually ended up into the, in the image, you know what its license and its version were. Okay, and with that, let me look at one, 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 um, one question. How about, about binary reproducibility? X. It, this is really one of the things that we are super, super proud of, and especially um, Richard is is like um, our god of reproducibility. We are doing great with that. So, if you just as as Dennis, I think it's Dennis. Um, if you if you have the same sources and you build it again, it should be binary wise the same. Um, okay, the supported Linux distributions that that is not exactly uh, relevant today. So, okay, now we have looked at what went to the, into the image. We have looked at what versions went into the image. Now that let's look at what licenses went into the image. And then we are going to actually add something to the, to the image, okay? And hopefully I'm not messing it up right now. Image license manifest, I think that's it. Yeah, here we go. So this is all the stuff that went into your build. This is this is one of the things that makes that makes it super cool if you are using um, Yocto to fuel your products that you actually sell or hand out. You you know a lot of a lot of a lot of open source um, licenses refer to distribution, and you usually distribute stuff that. Um, that you build on on uh, Yocto, and that's that's the point where it goes beyond embedded, and that's why uh, why we chose that title. Um, a lot of people are distributing containers, and the day that I I build a container, I tar it up, and I send it to somebody else, I am effectively distributing a Linux distribution. And in in the 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 moment that I'm doing that. I am bound by all the licenses 
in the container. That, that doesn't only apply to embedded devices. It applies to containers or to, to CDs with distributions or development environments. It applies to about everything. And this is where we really shine. And that's where we go beyond embedded. We, we build a coherent Linux distribution and we can tell you exactly what's inside and we can reproduce it. Okay, and now we have, we have talked about packages. We have talked about why we need packages. Why we've talked about why packages are cool. We have talked about that packages make up um, an image. And I think we have like a couple of minutes left to actually um, expand on an image. I think we're gonna do that. I don't think we, we shall go the long route. We, 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 we might actually do it. I have 10 minutes. Yay or nay? Yay. Yay, mean, yay means more fun and more time to mess up. Cheers. So our metadata is um, organized in layers. And this is, um, I think I, I promised to talk about it later. And, and now is later. Uh, layers mean that you can actually like add stuff in. And this is this is another super cool feature because you can be a software vendor, you can be a board vendor, you can be like whatever. If you are, if you have something that you want to support for your customers in, in um, a Yocto build, you essentially provide metadata for it. They can um, pull it in and tie everything up, base it on top of whatever um, setup they have. So, so it's it's like a mix, mix and match strategy. And then, uh, yeah, you you create your, your own distribution using the, the mix and match layers that you get and adding your own. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Create layer meta, LFM, does that work? Okay, let bake layers create layer, add layer, meta LFM. So I do now have um, a directory called meta LFM and I'm gonna make a recipes LFM, recipes LFM and um, by, uh, by convention, Recipes are structured in recipes like functional group and under recipes, there's directories for all the specific uh, recipes and their supporting files or uh, an images directory. So we're gonna go for images and there we're gonna start out with um, one more. Now I can't see anything because the chat window is overlaying the terminal. Okay, meta recipes extended, probably images, core image. Nope. Uh, recipes core images. Core, core image minimal dev. I'm gonna copy it here, CP, and we're gonna call it um, LFM image. That sounds cool, right? Image baby, and let's edit it for us for a bit. Um, this is what I just like cobbled up from um, image install append is. PC. I'll, I'll explain it in, in a second. Um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, uh, but, but, but talking and typing all at the same is really, really like complicated. Um, I live in, image okay i think i got it right okay so what did i do 
I, I started out with a simple image that is already coming with Pocky, copied it over into my layer. I need to extend the include path because now I'm not referring to, to a file right next to it, but to something in, a, in, a, in, a, in another layer. So I need the whole path in the layer. Description that I just modified is only like uh, a human readable short description to, to understand what the image is meant for. And then metadata consists essentially of a lot of functions and variables. And one of the main variables to control image generation is image install. And I append to image install. So whatever comes from, from the, the, the core image minimal right at the top, I append BC to it. And hopefully this works now. I have, I have talked so much and messed up so little that this actually can only fail, but we will see. So time bit bake LFM image. Time to have a drink. And look at um, at the at, at the chat. Is it best to start with a pocket repository? Uh, I could not could not follow. I know something is always happening. Um, assuming that you already have a target platform. Yeah, it depends. It, it usually depends. Um, and especially on the quality of your target platform, because there are some vendors that are uh, handing out really good metadata that you can like instantly use. And there are some vendors that had not really, really, really crappy metadata. And in that case, you should just start out with a plain Pocky and add your stuff on top until it does what you want. And uh, reference distributions by manufacturers. Yeah, it depends. And Yogesh, no, the BC, uh, the space before BC is actually needed because um, append does not add um, spaces to, to, to its content. And therefore um, it is needed. Otherwise the, the strings would be like slammed together and not make any sense anymore. So I um, uh, could not include core image minimal. Let's just see meta LFM recipes LFM. It, it, it is being found. I, I actually don't think that the ah yeah, but it's not the minimal. It's it's the def. That one is is not being um is not being being parsed correctly because I just copied it over. So. If, if that's that's the only fail I, I did in this whole session, then I'm, I'm happy. Okay. And I've, <laughs> I've been bitten by, <laughs> by one of, the, of, of our uh, recent um, changes because um, override and therefore also a pen syntax has, uh, has changed only like four weeks ago. And I, I am not used yet to it. So images, um, LFM, and I guess um, insert, if I get it right now, then we should up, end up with an image that actually brings BC, hopefully. Talking so much, I, th I think I've I've covered like um, dub double the content I do in in a in a usual uh, live coding session because um, in a, in in the usual live coding sessions there's um, only like ten people looking at what I do, and today we've got like ten times the ten people. So thank you everybody for being with me. Um, how to build Yocto with an external tool chain? Don't do it. <laughs> Seriously, it, it's, uh, it, it will just cause you pain. There's, um, there's a, a couple of hints you can get from a meta arm. 
because they they are like they like their external tool chains, but if you really uh, think it's a good idea, no, it is not. So we do have um, a build, run QEMU. Again, I set machine in local.conf, no graphic as usual, slurp. I'm gonna boot up again. And so let me check my notes if I have covered everything I wanted to tell you. Yeah, as pointed out, the tool, tool, the external tool chain, we are like building our own tool chain that suits the distribution as we needed it. Um, explain the G. Uh, yeah, I think we've covered everything. And now PC, as you all know. The answer is 42. I am on time. I am finished. Thank you everybody for having me. I, th I guess that's it. And yeah, well, drop, drop us notes, drop us comments. I'm around for, uh, for another couple of minutes. If there are no questions, you will have to listen to me bubbling and um, doing other things. This, this is a threat, I tell you, you don't want that. And yeah, well, follow us on the social media, look at the, at the already existing live coding sessions. Um, a new live coding session will be uh, announced really, really soon. I have not yet made up my mind on the topics to come. Yeah, and with that, I think I'm gonna uh, give back Joseph, to, to Joseph, Nico. Yeah. Uh, quick question. Uh, yeah? If you have your... Um, SSH history session um, for all the commands you have run, run um, giving that to people might be helpful. Uh, come again, I didn't get that. The, all the commands you ran on the SSH, uh, I mean on the terminal history, yeah. if you get uh, get the bash history and post that, that might be helpful. Um, yeah, the, um, the, the no graphic and the, and, and the slurp explanation you mean. Um, uh, oh, the bash history. Yes. Ah, yes. okay. Um, yeah. Let me see if I can, if I can. Before, can... Be, before you get rid of the terminal. So that's why I was kind of rushing to interrupt you almost. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, thank you. So, sure. Let me, let me check if I, if I can, but that shouldn't be a problem. Ah, uh, history. Yeah, looks good. And um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't want to like uh, fiddle around with it right, right now. While I hope people are still uh, about to talk to me or Nico, um, is there is there a preferred way where I should put the the bash history? Shall I mail it to Marisa so she can add it to the notes or whatever? Yeah, yeah we that, can do that. Yeah. Sure. Does it Thank work? You. Okay, mm -hmm. sure. Looks like you already have a question in the question yeah. and answer. Let me let me see. Thank you. When will we have a security ded dedicated session? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I guess once you bring enough money to pay a lawyer that sits right next to me and keeps me from talking, <laughs> be, 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 because there's no way I'm going to give you security advice. <laughs> Seriously. Um, yeah, best practices. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's complicated. You, I mean, the, the best security advice is trivial. Stay, stay on top of a maintained branch and don't put backdoors in. That's, that's, that's the whole thing that there is. There, is, there are a couple of tools or um, things that you can add on top, but um, I actually don't have real experience on, on those. I mean, I know that SE Linux and comparables um, might give you headaches occasionally and might help you occasionally. But um, I'm neither an expert on those, nor do I have experience, nor do I have any proper uh, recommendations. So uh, I personally probably won't do 
um, anything on, on security. And well, best practices, you know, there's, there's a fine line between, between things that are considered real production know-how and things that are like common knowledge. And I try to share as much common knowledge as possible in any way, but I will not cross the line where the, the core production know-how of my employer is affected. And I hope you can understand and respect that. So other questions? No questions. I, I have promised to be around for for a questions for 45 minutes. I want to use Linux in the name of my Yocto BSP. Get get in touch with with the, with the Linux Foundation trademark um, things, I guess. Well, um, the Yocto BSP. I mean, is it is it a product that you that you actually advertise and try to sell, or I mean, if you, if you call if you call your layer Meta Linux things, then <laughs> Joseph, there, there, so just because the question, I think not everybody see the questions. So there was a question whether someone can use the name Linux in the name yep. of the layer, and that's it's what a I trademark. To. Yeah, it's a trademark issue. Yep, and uh, yeah, you need to contact the Linux Foundation. I mean, it's it's not something that. Right. That Which we should relate to the Yocto project. Yeah. No, yeah. Yep. Right. Is it possible to run a Yocto build on WSL2? Yes, it is. And I actually have uh, have done it. I think it's live coding session uh, 16, uh, hexadecimal 11x10. One, one so it was a uh, happy birthday. Yes, I was building um, on WSL and I was actually running a Yocto build distribution as a WSL container. So it is both possible. You can build for WSL2 and you can build on WSL2. I think from Dunfell onwards. So this is explicitly supported, yes. So while we talk, uh, let me add something. I mean, first, I mean, thanks, Joseph, for your time. Uh, uh, Nico, the, the, the short interruption. Yes. We do have another question. Oh, but one that I'm gonna not going to answer. Um, how to change kernel image and DSTs? Um, this is rather complicated. There are actually a couple of really good um, presentations on that from uh, the various Yocto project developer days and the Yocto project in May this year. Um, it is it is a rather involved process due to the complexity of of the topic but it is certainly man manageable. So um, you would probably be better off to look at the kernel manual, kernel development manual, and those presentations. It is quite a bit beyond the, um, the, the topics that I, I usually, do, usually do. Sorry. Okay, more questions. How can, how can I use, and how did I get this one? I have no idea. How did, how did I, can I use a beer? I take the glass and I raise it to my mouth and I take a sip. And how did I get this one? I actually went to the fridge. Okay, topic done. Okay, yeah, okay, okay is a good question. I like okay questions. Uh, so uh, more questions. Um, how did I made my, my start journey in Yocto? Um, I actually started in 2011 when I attended my first ELCE in Prague. And I just went to the Yocto booth with a friend of mine. And I was like, I have no idea what you are doing, but can I get one of your t-shirts? And that's how I got my first conference t-shirt ever. And it was by the Yocto project. And that's how I started out. Um, how, so how would, uh, how would I recommend to start? Of, of course, by watching my tutorials regarding uh, um, SPDX in, uh, in OE core, I, sorry, I have no idea. Please, uh, if you have if you have more uh, specific needs on that, ask on the mailing list, and we will put you in touch with the people who know. How many hardware boards risk have um, a proper support in Yocto? In core, not, no real board. It's only QMO in uh, in the layer for risk five, Meta risk five. Um, the big Beagle five has 
good support. Um, but yeah, hardware is, is being complicated sometimes. If you care about that, talk to your risk five hardware vendors, have them um, approach us, have them join us, and we, will, we are happy to, to help them make things work. Um, okay, I think I have a couple of questions now. Let, let me start so the first one. How uh, an embedded how an application is usually developed and embedded in uh, in Linux. I, I have done a live coding session in getting started in C++ development. I think it was number 17, but don't don't nail me down on it. I, I would recommend to start out with that one and from that iterate on further. Um, metal layers can bring about everything, Yogesh, but is there a way to export the version information for all packages in an image? I actually demonstrated that at um, 4.5 p.m. my time, manifest in the deploy uh, directory to Mike Frampton. And is it possible to get a version hash similar? Yeah, that, that's exactly what, what the estate does. It, it changes one once. Um, once uh, things that Jan asks how to manage the project at large. L many layers from uh, many sources. Yeah, we know about that. And again, there is a live coding session on that. I think it was number 13, where I talk about repo, Git submodules, and CAS, my, with CAS being my personal favorite. And it does exactly what. Uh, you uh, what you are asking about? You define the the layers that you that you want. You define the revisions of the layers that you want. You define the variables that you want to be set for the build, and then you can kick off everything in your um, CI CD pipeline. And uh, Pedro asks ask uh, to add a set of packages to an image. Yes, you. Whatever you do, never ever modify stuff in layers that you do not own. If you want to, to add, modify, uh, remove, configure, whatever, just slap on your layer on top and add your things, your things there. Layers don't have to be big. I mean, the layer that I just created during the session essentially had like one payload line. It brought one image uh, and that one image consisted of no, two payload lanes, lines. And that one image essentially consisted of two real um, payload lines, which is the, the, the require and, um, and the image installer pen. So layers are cheap, recipes are cheap. Whatever you do, don't modify things in Pocky or layers that you do not own. Slap your one, own one on top, ever. Everything else is the best practice, which brings us back to a, uh, an earlier question. How can I get training and tutorial for, for, for using that one? Um, look at the yoktoproject.org um, page. There's an ecosystem tab and people offering services. Get in touch with one of those. Um, more questions. Uh, what are best practices about build folder as it con contains conflocal.conf? Again, um, this don't don't put it under version control because um, you actually have have uh, absolute things in there usually especially in bblayers.conf which we have not touched upon today and in local.conf with uh, with the directories for download and estate um, so it's best to have some form of mechanism that ought to create those in a build pipeline as already noted, I personally favor CAS because it's meant as, especially for that purpose. You have one configuration file, a YAML file that you can put, put under version control. And from going from there, all of your build is being set up and, and runs off. And that's what I personally consider a best practice, but there are varieties. But I think we all agree on do not put local.conf under version control. Generally, do not put things into, into local.conf 
that make the build more special than than necessary. Okay. Um, yeah, exactly. There's a, a Yopto project some uh, summit coming up, end of November. So I, I invite you all to 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 join us there. It will be awesome. I will be annoying you all there again. How to reduce the consumed storage? Um, sorry, that's that's a downside. Building stuff from source takes takes uh, CPU time and it takes storage. There's there's a couple of things you can tweak and twist here and there, but generally you have to you, you just need a lot of a lot of storage. There's no way denying that. Um, how to use Dev Tools? <laughs> Mm, I, I guess that 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 goes goes beyond the scope of the session, but there's um, documentation on that. So please head to to um, already existing videos on YouTube or the 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 manual. Will there be a recording? Yes, it will be on the Linux Foundation website, and I think Marisa told us it will be also on YouTube. Um, and one question in the Q and A. A brief about the stages of image stitching. Yeah, um, I think Nico, shall we spend one minute on it? We can, of course. We can. Okay. So um, we have we have only talked about the image as one like ominous thing that falls out in the end, which is obviously oversimplifying. And the image can take a lot of forms. In, in the case of QEMU, it usually is an X4, a flat file system that QEMU can use directly. But it can also be like a uh, tarballed up. It can be other file systems like uh, JFFS or whatever. And um, a, a somewhat recent addition is, is WIC, where WIC stand is, is, a, is, a, is a, like um, an onomatopoeic play on, on, on the words. It stands for Open Embedded Image Creator. And this essentially enables you to, to grab artifacts from, from the build and put out a binary blob that can be flashed onto some form of storage. So that can go into, into NAND image or onto an SD card or whatever. So the image format WIC actually like only denotes, okay, it went through the open embedded image creator. And for each target hardware that you want to use this for, you have to define a, a Wix script. I think that's live coding session eight, where I demonstrate for that for, for the BeagleBone flag. The SD image is, um, is, a, is a suffix that is sometimes used by um, proprietary vendors. This is nothing that, that comes from the Yocto project as itself. Okay. Okay, since it's quiet, <laughs> I want to come back <laughs> to something you said, which I think is very important to point. Uh, the Octo Project Summit, um, over the years, uh, we have, I mean, the Octo Project has had its own uh, mini conference. And uh, I mean, most of the time we've tried to be close to the Linux Foundation event. And what we've done in the past is we've, we've organized Dev Days. So Dev Days is basically like a it was like a day where we would gather people, um, I mean, in the room, like uh, 10, 20, 50 people in the room. And we have been like um, uh, beginners and advanced trainings. And these trainings are, have been given uh, physically, a physical event in the past. Obviously, uh, over, I mean, since the last two years, we haven't traveled that much. And we have started to do like virtual event uh, for the Yocto project. So we have started to build what we call the Yocto project summit or Yocto project conferences and so on. And it has been a quite successful event so far. Uh, so if you if you are interested in the Yocto project, I mean, what we encourage you to do is to join us uh, for the next one, uh, which, as uh, Joseph just said, will be uh, planned on November 29, December 1st, and December 2nd. So it will be a three-day event, and it will be a mixed bag of uh, trainings uh, for beginners and I mean, for, yeah, beginners and less beginners. Uh, there will be a day of presentation where we will have speaker like, I mean, Joseph and others from uh, the community will talk about what they do with the project, what they want to do with the project. I mean, how they use the project or anything. It's just going to be like a conference. 
And uh, yeah, so that's that's basically uh, going to happen soon. If you want to learn about this event, uh, I encourage that you just follow us on I mean, the social media. We are going to announce actually very soon uh, the next event. We are going to also call for speakers. Uh, so if you want, you can also try to contribute as a speaker. And uh, yeah, so that's been uh, quite uh, quite popular event. What we've done for the last two events is we've recorded everything and everything is also on the YouTube channel. So if you go on the Yocto project YouTube, you will see all the presentations and actually all the trainings that we've given at the last two events. And yes, yeah, so I mean, a lot of the question you have been I've seen today have, have answers actually at, I mean, at the previous event. So you can watch the videos and then you can come back with more questions, of course. Okay, so we could stay 25 more minutes if there are more questions. Um, so yeah, just be here. That's, a, so that's, a, that's another very, very interesting question, Nico, from a mar marketing standpoint, because the question reads, do you think Yocto is over-engineered comparing to BuildRoot and even OpenWRT? And the... Um, the, the down to earth real quest uh, real answer is no it serves a different purpose because um, both of the of the those other build systems have their strengths and their use cases and it's it's not a question of of complexity or a question of engineering it's a question of solving your problems and um, BuildRoot, for example, as it has been mentioned, is, is a great tool. I have been using it myself for quite some time. If you, and that's why I riffed quite a bit about uh, the, the packages distribution thing. BuildRoot is a great tool to crank out a root file system that you need to, or that you want to, to, to kick off real quick. I mean, the learning curve of Yocto is, is really, really steep. There's no denying that, but, uh, uh, you you can you you can achieve amazing things with it, and if if you don't need those amazing things, if all all you want is a root file system that matches a certain architecture for one board that is right on your desk, then Yocto is not for you. I mean that that then it's not over engineered; it's overpowered. That that's a major difference. You you don't you don't need a lorry truck. To get one bag of sand for for your children's play playground, you can do it, but the lorry truck is not over engineered; it's overpowered. That that's the major difference. And so, if if you want something for your tinkering, one of your one of a kind board on your on your on your desk that you that you are never gonna uh, like update for security reasons that you are not going to support for like twenty years, then then it might be that Yocto is not for you. That, that's, I think it's fair game to name it. Um, so it's not, li not about liking one thing more or less. It's about choosing the right tool for the job. And if, if, you, if you have um, a project where you, where you have to support some hardware platform that has to pull in some, um, some some software stacks from from different people and you have to like roll out updates on a per package basis for example then yes then yocto shines if you don't need that if you have like one source package and you want it to run on one hardware and then you pull the network plug out and you run it forever then you don't need it because i mean um this layers mix and match things is, is, is a super powerful thing if you need it. I know that BuildRoot doesn't have it, but if you don't need it, then, then that's, no, that's no drawback, then you can use BuildRoot. So um, it's not about engineering or, or about liking, it's about understanding your problem. And once you've understand, uh, uh, well, sorry, once you've understood your problem, then you can pick the tool. Don't do it vice versa. That's not going to work out. Okay, I saw people are merging Yocto with Android those days. I have, I have never seen that. 
seriously. Nico? No, and I don't quite understand the question. I mean, Android is the distal, what we could say. I mean, it includes its own build system. And Yocto is a build system that actually you can use to build the distal that you want. So maybe if you can rephrase or maybe add more details, we can take that mm. further. As, does Yocto provide a package manager? Um, it does provide a package manager. You can you can instantly like um, use, use one. Um, Frank Vasquez, who presented on the last YPS Yocto Project Summit on in May, exactly about this. Um, how how to speed up your development using package in in target runtime package management management in in the production well again it depends i personally uh prefer uh image updates but again don't don't pick on favorites pick pick on requirements and you have multiple platforms similar in every place i don't understand the question yogesh I'm sorry. Uh, next question by, by Mike. I have read any resources about how to build a root only file system with Yocto? Yeah, sure. Open your local.conf and type image underscore features plus equals um, string read only root FS. That's it. Now you have your read only root file system. Seriously, I'm not kidding you. Image, maybe we can expand on image features. Image Just features? Because you, yeah, you mm. mentioned it, so. Shall we do it. that? I mean, we we have 20 minutes left. Shall we build a root, uh, read only uh, root, uh, file system? I, I, I'm fine with it. At least what we could say is that, I mean, the, I mean image feature is, uh, is, is I mean, actually a feature of the, yep. of the metadata, the, the configuration that we can use to actually configure specific parameters which are for the image. So read-only uh, is one of them. It's actually going to do many things uh, to the underlying, uh, the resulting image. So it actually is going to implement whatever is needed to do the read-only, but there are different features. So which apply, I mean, globally to the image. Um, I don't think we have, I'm not sure we have time to make the demo, but. Um, I'm just gonna kick it off. Uh, I think it shouldn't take more than like two or three minutes. Okay. So. If you if you if you give me screen share, sorry, read only root fs. You you can see um um while it builds, I'm gonna talk about the the image features that Nico just mentioned. Um, there's image features, and that just added read only root fs there. Fake. Uh, LFM image. Just to discuss for, for the one image, what about RAMFS? I have no idea about RAMFS. Not at all. Never heard of it. Okay, so um, image features are like um, special keys that you can set for your image to, to be tuned for, for specific use cases. One of those um, keys is read only root FS, obviously. Another key is um, tools SDK, which injects a whole SDK tool chain into your image, which makes it obviously like this, but you can build in target. And we're going back to the best practices thing. This is not a best practice. This is, uh, this is a bad practice. Don't build in target because we want such root FSs. Um, you can, but another cool thing is tools profile. For example, which pulls in. Um, uh, for, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let me just look at this. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Could not be configured offline. Okay, I finally have a proper fail during this session. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, it should be that simple, and it usually is, but I, I guess because we're surfing on master and on risk five as a really, really new addition, something might be going wrong here. I can't figure it out on, uh, on the fly. I'm sorry. Um, if at all possible, I'll 
provide a small follow-up to, to Marisa. And if not, well, then I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, image, image features can, can like inject major behavior, behavior changes or package selections. And yeah, they're, they're like kind of a, of a big switch that you can throw on a specific image. And they are predefined. So there's no, there's no like um, imagining your image feature right now because you think like uh, images Im images fancy is cool and you you want it. It doesn't work like that. You can you can uh, create distro features on the fly, but um, again that I'm not going to cover today. Uh, because I already covered it in uh, one of the recent live coding sessions when it comes to uh, building your own debug distribution. You want to feel, uh, you might want to check out that session. Okay. Sorry for interrupting you, Nico, but like when questions come in, um, I usually jump on those. That's okay. So, Shua, Shua, do you want to talk for a couple of minutes about the program itself? Um, yes. Any more questions? Yeah, we still have, um, well, you know, close to ten minutes. Looks like there is another question that came in on the really? chat. How to build Yocto with LLBM? Um, not not exactly LLVM, but there's Meta Clang. Um, just Google it for it, um, or somebody might, can 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 drop in the link. It's it's just what I what I uh, explained about layers. Somebody in this case, somebody who likes Clang or LLVM creates a layer that can inject a lot of infrastructure into a pre-existing build. And in this, in this specific case, it's, it's Kim Raj. I, I, I hope fully pronounced him closely enough so he feels proud about it. Uh, Kim's a good guy. If, if you ever get a, a message by Kim on the ma uh, on mail, um, don't, don't be like angry because it's super short. Be proud because your question was interesting enough, so he took time to answer you. Kim is one of of the major like brains behind a lot of things in the Yoka project, and especially layers around it. And um, he does a lot of really cool and really crazy stuff. He's he's the maintainer for Meta Risk Five actually, and Meta Clang. So um, yeah, you you can build with. LLVM. Um, there's even magic in there to distinguish between packages that can be built with Clang or LLVM and cannot be built with LLVM. So yeah, we got that covered. Thanks, Nico, for the link. Um, you have a similar Linux to, to multiple platforms. Yeah, <laughs> mm, it depends. Sorry. It, you shouldn't worry about the exact co commands you have to type. You should, uh, you should understand the requirements. So um, that, that's really a complex question. Um, let me digress a bit into, into, the, um, into the image versus distribution topic. Because um, a distri distribution actually means like you, you present a form of interface that your application can use. This can be binary or, uh, or only like API compatibility. But in, you, if, you, if you say similar Linux distributions, I, inserted that there, then you usually mean 
you have um, some form of application or setup that you want to um, deploy to, to several hardware platforms. So you would be probably, probably, this is all under, under lots of, lots of um, guessing here. You probably want to build one distribution that goes to several hardware platforms. And in that case, you would have one common setup and build for, um, for several machines. You could do that in, uh, by chaining calls to bitbake your image. I mean, I demonstrated machine equals whatever, bitbake stuff. And you can do that for machine, my board A, bitbake stuff. Machine, my board B, bitbake stuff. My machine, my board C, bitbake stuff. And you end up with a temp directory where under temp deploy images, you have my board ABC and the resulting images. This might suit your use case, but it really depends. If you, if you have that requirement, it might, be, it might be useful to actually get in touch with somebody who has already uh, maintained such a system. Are there uh, um, other package ma uh, managers than RPM? Um, well supported is IPK which uses the, the DAP image format, but uh, without the big database, the, the ITSI package manager, I think, I think the Yocto project even is, is maintaining it. Um, and um, there's some support for DAP packages as is, but uh, I have some, some well, non-optimal feelings about it. Let's, let's put it like that. Um, it should be there, but I don't think you should use it. So generally, we support RPM and, and IPK. Those, those are really well supported. And I can tell you that I use IPK every day uh, in, in, my, in my day job. And it works really, really well. Um, OK, note on package managers, just because something just because something uses a package manager, that does not mean you can install random, random packages from, from somewhere. So this is a common misconception. Some, some people think that by setting um, the package manager to, to Debian, they can uh, magically use apt-get and, and, and like slap in some package repository for Debian. And no, it doesn't work like that. It never ever will be working like that. You know, package, the package manager means the, the tooling that gets your sources from the build to the image. The package manager does not magically make some stuff from the internet, from some repository, make on your board. No way. And why would you want to change Yocto's package manager? It depends. It depends on your specific use case. I personally use IPK. Um, because it feels Debian-ish and I can inspect um, resulting packages for dependencies or whatever using DPKG, DPKG. But that's about it. RPM, for, for the common use case where you have no runtime package management, it doesn't matter. So I, uh, I, I, I got on, 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 on bubbling again. Um, I, I guess we could end with common misconceptions about Yocto or uh, things, that, um, uh, things that people think about Yocto but that are not necessarily true. Package man uh, Yogesh asks, package manager we're talking about is about the, no, it's about the deployable system. We're only, only talking about the deployable system. We're, we're really, I, Docto does not care how stuff got on your development system. Once there's a tool chain and the requirement to, uh, required tooling, it doesn't care how stuff ended up there. You can, you can run, you can actually, now it, now it gets crazy. You can actually build Yocto on Yocto. You can build um, an image that boots on, x86 
that has no package management at all, but is capable of running another Yocto build. So uh, the package management that we are talking about here is always the package management of the, the resulting Linux system and that could be run on the target and nothing else. We not, never ever talk about the development system. And yeah, exactly. That, that's one of the common misconceptions that I get sometimes. And uh, it, the question goes like this. How can I use Yocto to build a, uh, a custom Ubuntu distribution? And the answer is you can't because we're not an Ubuntu customizer as well as we're not a Debian customizer, not a CentOS customizer and not an Arch Linux customizer and whatever. It's about building your own distribution. So again, it's about understanding your requirements. If your requirement is to use Ubuntu, then use Ubuntu. Don't go for the Octo project. If your requirement is written down as this has to run on Ubuntu, then we are not what you need. And um, building a custom Linux distribution really means we take source and build stuff. We do not take other distribution things and artifacts and magically mangle them and put out your custom distribution. This is not what, what it's all about. It's about building custom from scratch. And the smallest possible root FS for a specific target is um, null. Because if I want a, a, a root file system that is null, then I define, then I patch the kernel so it doesn't jump into init and I stay in the kernel forever. I have no root file system. So the question is not exactly making a good point, for, but for uh, real life use cases, you can easily achieve root file systems in uh, single digit me megabyte ranges. Again, it depends on your use case. If your use case mandates that Node.js is, is to be run on the root file system, then it will be like 30 megabytes plus X. If your use case mandates that there is systemd and Apache running on it, it will be 30 megabytes plus X. If your use case, on the other hand, mandates that all you need to do is kick off one binary that is uh, suited, uh, is located at bin in it, then you can easily go, go down to a couple of hundred of kilobytes. So it really depends. I'm sorry, Yogesh, that question has no answer. A smallest, a smallest possible root file system for a specific target. Yeah, name the specific target, name the requirements, name the smallest softwares. That that's that's business know-how, and uh, let, so, sorry for wording it that hard. That's your homework to do. No, actually, I wanted to uh, say that, uh, as you said, uh, it's not Ubuntu, uh, what you can get it out of uh, Yocto. You, you should not use uh, Yocto to build new Ubuntu. But uh, what I thought Yocto, I'm very new to Yocto, so I was trying to understand. So uh, what I understood from Yocto is to get uh, some image which is very specific to that particular hardware with minimal software which are to be installed which are only necessary for the customers to use uh, that will go to the production system is that correct that is correct the it's, okay. it's about defining so so once you have your metadata uh, set straight you can define that your image actually just gets that application and from the dependency tree that this application spans out so uh, an application needs libraries and maybe an init manager. So you, you basically define what you need. Don't install, don't define what you want to install, define what you need. And if you if you define that I, I need only that one application, then the resulting root file system will be as minimal as possible. So Okay, that okay. That's actually a good point. Um, a Yocto distribution will not work like um, okay. Here's your here's your standard distribution, and you put on things on top. But a standard Yocto, Yocto distribution is this is what you want. 
And what do you need in order to make this work? And then we're gonna add everything. This is how a Yocto distribution is, cons cons con uh, a Yocto image, not a distribution. A Yocto image is constructed. It only puts in the things that you act actually need to, um, to fulfill the, the, the requirements that you stated. And now we're going back to one of the things that I mentioned earlier. I talked about containers. And one of my personal um, favorite topics is building containers for super specific topics. And I'll actually be speaking at a, at a German, okay, you are all entitled to love now, JavaScript conference in two weeks, where I talk about building hyper-specialized Node.js containers with Yocto. And this essentially is just what I described. I define an image where only Node.js is required. And I even define Node.js doesn't need uh, internalization. And I define, I want Node.js to be built against Muscle instead of glibc. And I end up with a container that can only run Node.js. It's like 25 megabytes in size. And you can't even get a shell in it because there is no shell. You can't hijack the container and get to bash because there is no bash. So by definition, um, a properly defined image in Yocto is always as minimal as possible. That's, that's, that's the, the, the bottom line of everything. No things get pulled in just because we like them things get pulled in because you you tell you to, to pull them in and this is okay this is another common misconception people showing up and saying okay i've got this image from from my vendor and it's it's like super bloated and this and this and this and this and this, and this is everything in and how can i remove it and the question is not is is wrong the question is not not about how how to remove stuff the question is why, why do I add things first so I can remove them later? Don't add them at all. Start with an image that only defines what you want. Don't even add stuff first. Then you don't have to remove anything and you end up with a much, much slimmer image. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Nicholas. This is a great session. Uh, thanks for joining everybody. And we are leaving you with just some resources for your continued learning. Thank you so much. Thanks, Shua. Thanks, Marisa, for having us. Thanks for the invitation. And well, take care, everybody. See you around. Thank you. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thank everyone. You.